You know, you could get arrested for sleeping there. I know. Th there's a hostel just down the street. Oh, uh, let me help you with this. No, no, it's all right. Well, I, I scared you and you dropped your stuff. It's the least I can do. Never mind, it's okay, really. Look, ma'am, I know what you're thinking. Bum, hobo, thief, blackguard, scoundrel, wino. Weirdo. <laughs> uh, that just about covers it. Sorry, ma'am. None of the above. Gerald Nismith, Knight of the Road, at your service. I'm Terry Taylor. Um, one of my clients runs a hostel. I could try and get you in, if you want. I'd appreciate that, ma'am. Right again, Gerald. What? Now, the popular sentiment these days is that everybody's out for themselves. They're all too busy. They don't care. <coughs> I congratulate myself in that I don't believe that. Well, all I did was... was... to make human contact. After you, ma'am. Well, yeah. There's more than a little reason to be wary these days, huh? Miss Taylor, I've traveled this country from one end to the other. And for every murderer, <coughs> there's 10,000 people who'll help out a complete stranger on nothing but kindness of the heart. <laughs> well, Mr. Nesmith, I'm a lawyer and... and uh, you've seen it all, huh? Yeah, well, that's what I thought. And then I learned the trick. As soon as you stop worrying about somebody taking something from you and trust them a little something good happens believe me well look at us mm. wasn't for <coughs> trust mr nesmith what is it your heart oh, look just hang on a minute we'll be on the ground floor in just a second okay thank you for what? Proving me right. Uh. Letter to the probate judge. We presume that there is no will because none was found in the records office. Also, I think it's pretty safe to assume that the size of the estate will be minimal. Terry. Oh. Where's T.S.? At the bus station. The coroner found a locker key on Mr. Nesmith's body. Oh, so you're going to handle the wino's estate. He was a really nice man, Decker, and I think he deserves a little attention. And he's definitely not a wino. Oh, I'm sure T.S. agrees with you. He likes working for free. Say as who? The estate of Gerald Nesmith. Hey, T.S., you're in luck. These are bank books. Hey, uh, T.S., remember you owe me a month's rent? Oh, Dicker, that's all you think about is money? Yeah. And you've got your guarantee, too. This is his will. It names a guy named Junior G as his sole beneficiary. <laughs> Describes him as a gentleman of the road who resides seasonally at the Starlight Mission. I'll find him. Found him a block from the mission. Junior G? Did you know Gerald Nesmith? Mr. Nesmith died recently. He named you the sole beneficiary in his will. Look, it's not a huge fortune, but you'll probably receive a couple of thousand anyway. I ain't deaf. I heard what you said. I just ain't partial to being roasted by a big private detective. That's all. 
Did you hear what I said about the money? Yeah, I ain't stupid either, lady. What do I got to do for it? Nothing, really. Just wait until the will is probated. <laughs> it's fall out there. A couple of weeks, it's going to be winter. You know what that means? Snow? Yeah. Beautiful snow. And no place to sleep. Hey! Wait a minute! With the money from the estate, you could take a bus down south. I hate buses. So take a train. I plan to anyway. You better do something pretty quick or your money's heading down south. Junior, I think I got this place where you don't have to worry about sleeping accommodations. Well, maybe we could talk about it. Hey, Junior, how'd you like to watch TV? There's one on the bar in the gym. No, uh, thanks. I don't like them. You can't squeeze the world into 14 inches. How about a cup of coffee, then? No, I had enough. Thanks. Yeah. Hey, Terry. You got to, I mean, has the wheel been probated? Well, we've hit a little hitch. How little? It seems Gerald had a wife. Marlene. You know her? Nope, but Gerald described her in his notebooks. Sounds like the kind you're glad to leave behind. Yes, well, she's here now. And she's hired a lawyer. They're contesting the will. <laughs> I knew it! I knew it! Gerald says it right here. Money can't buy you love, but it sure can give you trouble. Junior, did Gerald ever talk about having money socked away somewhere? No, we never talked about money. Gerald hated it. Well, if all Gerald had was in the bank books that we found, it hardly seems worth fighting over. Never underestimate the need for greed. Gerald Nesmith. Yes, well, until we find out exactly how much Gerald had, you better not make any plans about going south. Suits me. What about my dough? If this bird flies south, you won't be seeing anything. So if you don't stay and fight this thing... Mrs. Nesmith stands to inherit everything Gerald had. I'll tell you what, you handle all the legals, and I'll keep Junior happy. Thanks, T.S. Uh, T.S., I changed my mind. Uh, seeing as you're up, will you get me a coffee? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Proceed, Mrs. Nesbitt. Well... Jerry always had kind of a difficult time choosing between what was real and what wasn't. Mm, so, uh, he was a bit of a dreamer. Oh, I should say so. Whatever the latest trend or fashion, you could always count on Jerry to be right there to try it out. Hmm, I would assume this would have proven rather difficult to cope with. Are you kidding? If it wasn't for me keeping my finger on the purse string, we would have had nothing. Nothing at all. Now, Mrs. Nesmith, did you receive fair compensation for the services you provided, Mr. Nesmith? How could you call that measly allowance fair, huh? <laughs> it's barely enough to get by on. Look, all I want here is what is rightfully mine. And that's what Jerry would have wanted, too, if he'd had any say in the matter. Your witness. Mrs. Nesmith, how long were you and Mr. Nesmith married? We're still married, honey. Legal. 26 years. Then how long did you reside together? Jerry went crazy about 12 years ago. And you haven't seen him since? Well, every once in a while, he'd poke his head through the door. Could you tell us how much this measly allowance amounted to? $600 a week. In this day and age. So you never had to work? No. But you try living on a measly 600 bucks a week. <laughs> it ain't easy. Mrs. Nesmith, could you tell us how your husband made as much money as he apparently did? The stock market. <laughs> oh, Jerry was always walking around saying crazy things like, uh, buy low, sell high. 
It was me that was always pestering him into uh, investing in something substantial. Like? Like my brother-in-law's chicken farm. Now, if Jerry had sunk some money into that, it never would have gone belly up like it done. And when was that? Oh, about 12 years ago. Just about the time he left you. You're right, yeah. It was just about that time. Thank you, Mrs. Nesmith. That's all. Oh, it looks like Gerald really hit the nail on the head with that one. Miss Taylor. You know, if that guy had wings and a tail, he'd take off and gobble. Miss Taylor. Excuse us. Well? Well, what? Come on, counselor. You're taking a shellacking in there. I am? Hey, you put that loser on the stand, and who do you think they're going to believe in there? Him or Marlene? Lorne. Tough call. Yeah? Well, here's a tougher call. I intend to prove that your guy applied undue pressure on Nesmith, causing him to change his will. Come on, Gilmore. You know, I was going to let you get away with the settlement before, but now, now I think I want all the marbles. Lorne! See you tomorrow, Miss Taylor. Marlene. <laughs> Come on, try it on. Work? It's for you, try it on. Oh. I really don't like these things. Hey, I noticed. Too big. A man in your position better get used to these things. What position? The net worth of Gerald's estate. So what do you think? Well, Jack, it's OK, I guess. Um, what do you think of this? <sighs> it's a lot of zeros. You're rich, Junior. Mm. Many's a slip between the cup and the lip. Thanks for the advice. I don't know if I want that much money. What? Well, look what's happened to me already. I came in here owing nothing to anybody, and now here I am wearing a suit. I'm, I'm sleeping indoors. I'm smoking cigars that other people buy for me. A week ago, you would have passed me in the street and you wouldn't have given it a second thought. And now everybody knows me. You know why? Because I owe them for all this stuff that I don't want. I think it's time to go. Look, Junior, you are right about all those things, but it's not that simple anymore. You've already appeared in court. If you leave now, the other side can subpoena you. You've got to tell your story in court. You've got to tell them everything. Me and Gerald, we went from one end of this country to the other. Three times. We was happy. No debts. Most of the time a full belly. Nobody to answer to. Yeah, Gerald, uh, he liked that. <laughs> he said he'd never had it so good. You know, it was like he'd never seen the outside world before. He couldn't get enough of it. I, uh, I, I showed him how to get by at first. And he, Picked it up pretty fast, and he soon got the hang of it. We were partners. We were buddies. We we're friends like. How did you and Mr. Nesmith support yourselves during those six years? Well, we never stole anything, if that's what you mean. You know, we washed dishes, we moved furniture, we cleaned garages. You know, anything was honest and didn't tie us down. Junior, Mr. Nesmith's bank books show a number of withdrawals. Did he contribute money to your partnership? Well, uh, every Christmas, he'd give me a present. It's usually something I needed, like woolly socks or new boots, you know. And I'd, uh, I used to give him a new notebook and a pen. Like the notebooks found in his box? Yeah, yeah. He used to love to write stuff down, you know, where we'd been, what we saw. Instead of a camera, he used a notebook. What happened to those notebooks, Junior? Well, he saved them. But they were all there in his locker. Thank you, Junior. Mr. Grayson, you allege that you and Gerald Nesmith never did anything illegal, and yet this copy of your arrest record is quite, shall we say, impressive. Yep. I guess having no money or a fixed address are pretty darned illegal in this country. Yes, they are, Mr. Grayson. 
And it's also illegal to place undue influence on a susceptible individual. You talking about Gerald? Yes, I am, Mr. Grayson. Now, doesn't it seem rather strange to you that a millionaire would leave his safe, comfortable home and set out on a life of struggle and hardship? Now I'm gonna look at her. And doesn't it seem even stranger to you that a man with a fortune would leave all that money to the one person most responsible for him having to undergo all that struggle and hardship? That's Gerald for you. That's where you're wrong, Mr. Grayson. It wasn't Gerald Nesmith. It was you. You pressured him to stay with you. You made him dependent upon you. You made him rewrite his will when you found out he wasn't just another one of your reprobate friends, but that he had money. That, Mr. Grayson, is the most logical, reasonable explanation for what happened to Gerald Nesmith. Thanks to you. That's not true. Your Honor, I have no further questions at this time. However, I feel it is now eminently clear that my client, Marlene Nesmith, deserves to be remembered by her departed husband, and would have been had not this man dragged him from his home, traipsed him across the country, and caused Mr. Nesmith to change his will in his favor. Your Honor. Is this waiting bad or good? It depends, Junior. What do you want? Just what I thought I wanted in the first place, just to get out of here. Mr. Grayson. <clears throat> Mr. Grayson, is there anything you'd like to say in defense of your claim? Well, I, um, I've been reading Gerald's uh, last notebook, Your Honor, ever since this whole thing started. And uh, if anything should be said, I think uh, Gerald should say it. You may proceed. August 27th, Bennington, Vermont. Everyone has the same freedom I enjoy, but most of them never realize it. They believe money is freedom. I found that freedom is the only thing that grows as you spend it. My advice, to heck with money, spend freedom. One question, Mr. Grayson. What would you do if you were awarded Mr. Nesbitt's estate? Uh, well, I'd probably uh, keep the notebooks and uh, give the rest to people who need it. <laughs> if nothing else, uh, this thing has taught me what I need and what I don't. <laughs> Just as I thought, you may be seated. It is the opinion of this court that the requests of this will are quite clear. Your oh, Honor. Sit down, Mr. Gilmore. While requirements of the Nesbeth will are quite clear in the disposition of his money, the court is in possession of another document, an injunction from the Revenue Service. It lays a lien on the entire estate for back taxes, which, if I can add and subtract correctly, will diminish it substantially. But what about uh, <clears throat> Gerald's notebooks, Your Honor? You may keep those, Mr. Grayson. Uh, well, it's all I ever wanted anyway. <laughs> <clears throat> well, that's it, Decker. Well, Junior, your week's up and you're paid in full. Mm -hmm. I can't say I'm happy to see you go. Right. It's cool outside. Maybe you should wait for Indian summer or something. Well, you know, it's always something, T.S. If it ain't a million bucks, it's Indian summer. Only things that never stand still are time and the road. And I'm glad I caught you before you took off. Look, read this. It's from a publisher. He wants to buy Gerald's notebooks. It's a terrific offer. <sighs> Too bad I burned them. What? That's what you tell him. Crazy old wino burned them. Look, Junior, you don't have to do anything. Just give me power of attorney. Hey, I'll do better than that. I'll give you the notebooks. There, you decide what to do with them. See you when the weather clears up. Take care, Junior. So now what do I do? If I was you, I'd read them and find out. 